Health facilities all over the world generate waste. About 15% of the waste generated by healthcare activities are classified under hazardous waste. Healthcare facilities generate on average between 0.2 and 0.5 kg of hazardous waste per bed per day. The medical waste of prime concern to medium and small healthcare facilities are infectious waste and sharps. These wastes are waste contaminated with blood and other bodily fluids. Each year, an estimated 16 billion injections are used globally, and waste from injections contain potentially harmful microorganisms which can pose risk of infections like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV AIDS, and injuries to health workers and the community at large if not managed properly. In Ghana, the most common mode of medical waste disposal is by landfill, which is considered unsafe. To meet international standards, the World Health Organization WHO, introduced the Injection Safety Incinerator Program to address issues of disposal and eradicate the risk associated with improper management of medical waste in the country. To localize it, Ghana's foremost Industrial Research and Development Institute, the Institute of Industrial Research of the CSIR, has come out with a modified incinerator made from local materials. So far, the Institute has built 10 of such incinerators in five regions across the country. The incinerator has an output of 80 kg per day with a destruction efficiency of 98.47 and a thermal efficiency of 88% using fuel wood as primary fuel. With temperatures more than a thousand degrees Celsius, the multi-chamber design incinerator ensures in-depth burning and releases gentle gases to the atmosphere. The incinerator has the capacity of burning five boxes of medical waste every 10 minutes. The latest health facility to benefit from the CSIR collaboration is the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission Gaek Hospital at Kwabenya in Accra. What necessitated this facility for the Gaek Hospital? Initially, we were constructing a pit, and then when we have a lot of medical waste, we dispose them off in the empire. We put them in the pit and then burn them. And we realized that that wasn't also a safe way. And so we inquired from the district and realized that Pantan Hospital had a way of disposing. They also had an incinerator. So we gathered all our medical waste to the incineration points. So that was an arrangement we had with Pantan. It wasn't a pleasant experience at all. So we saw the need to construct our own incinerator. With that, we could do our own um, disposal of medical waste, of course, uh, safely. And so we decided to take a tour of the districts. So we realized that one was at Abokobi. We inquired and then we were informed that it was CSIR that constructed it. So we made efforts to contact them and today we have this incinerator complete. The incinerator was constructed at a cost of 37,000 Ghana cities. A principal research scientist, Dr. Kisiedu Akufukumi, handed over the facility to the chairman of the hospital committee, Professor Geoffrey Amy Reynolds. Today, officially, we are handing over the project to the, institute, the hospital. This is the manual which contains the operation of this equipment, which officers who are supposed to operate it have been trained. So on this day, we officially hand over to the hospital. Thank you. Thank you very much. I received this and wish to, on behalf of the whole body, thank you very much for the construction and for putting it up in a way that we can operate. The training that you have offered to our colleagues is very much appreciated. And we believe that it will go a long way to help us treat our waste as it should be. 
Handlers of the incinerator have been trained to use and manage it professionally. The brain behind the construction of the incinerator is Dr. William Ousodro of the Institute of Industrial Research of the CSIR. There are three different chambers for this incinerator and that is the novelty of the incineration process that this design presents to ways of managing medical waste which is quite different from what exists presently in other parts of the country. Most incinerating facilities like this have a single chamber which means that you generate all the heat within one chamber and then you have effluents that go through a chimney and it's released into the atmosphere. And because you have just one chamber, the retention time of the gases are very, very, very fast. And therefore, after or during the incineration process, you have a lot of pollution within that environment. And there is a risk of having what we call polycyclic aromatic compounds, which have been known to be carcinogenic materials that are released into the atmosphere and that is the reason why many people do not really are not fanciful about using the use of incineration as a means of managing waste. This system has three chambers and therefore before the effluence gets to the chimney, it would have gone through temperatures ranging from about 500 degrees Celsius to about 1,300 degrees Celsius. And therefore, what comes out is mainly carbon dioxide, water vapor, and a few what we call scent gases, which is hydrogen and then carbon monoxide, which would even recombine to form water and carbon dioxide. All that it means is that it is very environmentally friendly. And as you can see, within temperatures at which we are incinerating, it is a very ambient way by which you can stay. So you don't inhale a lot of the gases which would cause problems to the, to the operator. The advantage of this to the previous open burning and then also the use of landfills to, to dispose of the waste is that you reduce the risk of reinfection from this medical waste. This design uses firewood because you could be operating in areas where it's quite remote and you don't have access to LPG or electricity. And fuel wood is something which is very, very common in Ghana. So any other clinic or hospital, no matter how remote it is from the national grid or places where they can have access to LPG, they can still operate by this. The Gaik Hospital began as a clinic for the atomic energy some decades ago, serving a small population. It was put up to help uh, with the staff of the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission to see whether they are unduly exposed to radiation. For instance, they had a whole body counter. A whole body counter would look at what has been ingested into the body, radiation-wise, and other things. Today, with six doctors, six general nurses, and eight midwives, Gaik Hospital now serves the whole of Ga East, as well as Kasua and beyond. Over 56,000 clients report to the OPD annually, overstretching the facility. The Atomic Energy Hospital without an X-ray is something that really is a minus. It is our desire to come to build an X-ray unit, a model that further facilities could look up to, so that if our people go out inspecting, they can tell facilities to come and see a model facility in Ghana Atomic Energy. That is our dream, and we are hoping that people can come to our aid. Um, what we lack is financial support. We would appreciate it if benevolent organizations come to our aid so that we could put up a model X-ray unit to serve the catchment area. Malaria, hypertension, and respiratory diseases are the common cases presented at the 23-bed capacity Gaek Hospital.